Barbara Lemming is the best-selling author who brings us the startling biography, If This Was Happiness. It is the tragic life story of Hollywood's love goddess, Rita Hayworth. Opposite of Macho, look at this exquisite woman, Rita Hayworth, one of the most seductive-looking, beautiful women of her time. Barbara Leeming, is that the way you pronounce it? Yes, that's correct. Leeming, has uh, written this, If This Was Happiness. I'll get into what that means, but I want you to take a look at a poster of Rita Hayworth playing one of her most famous roles, Gilda. Take a look at this exquisite woman. I mean, this is something. And even before we talk about her background and everything else, I want to show a clip from that film because for many people, uh, born too late to know her at her prime, I want you to see something that is incredibly hot. Watch Rita Hayworth and Gilda. They once had a shooting up in the Klondike when they got Dan McGrew. Folks were putting the blame on the lady known as you. That's the story that went around. But here's the real lowdown. Put the blame on Maine, boy. Put the blame on Maine. Maine did a dance called the Hitchy Coo. That's the thing that slew Magoo. Put the blame on Maine, boys. Put the blame. Was she as really? Was she as sensual, as sexual in her real life as she appeared there? Well, that's a complicated question because whenever I see the image of Gilda, I always remember what Orson Welles, Rita's second husband, said to me. He said, every time I look at Gilda, I remember what a total impersonation that was. I and mean, Rita was nothing like that. Rita came closest probably in, in life to being a shy eight-year-old girl, except sexually. And Rita was somebody for whom sex was love. And as a result, Rita was compulsively sexual. Did that compulsion, as you state in the book, stem from the fact that her father incested her? Is that the right yeah. word? Yeah. That's the whole reason that I wrote If This Was Happiness was because I had discovered that Rita's past was completely different from the legend of Rita Hayworth. The legend of Rita Hayworth was that she led a protected childhood. Is that her childhood. Is that her father right there? That's her father. Mm -hmm. That's her father, Eduardo Cancino. And that's when Rita was dancing with him at the age of 12 in Tijuana in the gambling casinos in Mexico. And during that period, as I found out, Eduardo was beating and raping her in the afternoon and then dancing with her at night. And it's the kind of horrific childhood that no one should have to experience. And my feeling was that suddenly so much of Rita's life made sense in a way that it never had before. This was a woman whose whole life was distorted by her father's abuse of her, which went on for years. And for her to have become the sex goddess of the world, because she was the love goddess of the 1940s, was the worst thing that could have happened to her, because it confirmed what her father had told her, that the only way she could get love was through her sex appeal. Howard Hughes? Howard Hughes was one of the sadder episodes in, in Rita's life. She got pregnant during a very brief affair with Howard Hughes and had an abortion, which resulted in complications when she was in Europe. And actually, that was when she met Ali Khan, when she was, when she was in Paris, right after she'd gotten out of the hospital. Two other lovers, Kurt Douglas? Kirk Douglas was frightened by her. He seemed like a lot of the men in her life to realize that she had some tragic secret that was not just pulling her down, but he feared it was going to pull him down as well. David Niven? David Niven was kind to her, and it's one of the sweeter affairs. It wasn't very long, but Rita was drawn to him 
like a nurse. That was, there was something about Rita that reached out to people in pain, and David Niven at that point was. You mentioned her marriage to Prince Ali Khan, one of the world's wealthiest men. We'll show you a little video of that, talk more about how she ended up tragically afflicted with Alzheimer's disease, and then we'll take the questions that are bursting from the audience, but you have to give us a two-minute break. Let's jump right to husband number three, Prince Ali Khan. How did that marriage, that legendary marriage, work out for her? It should never have happened. Ali was one of the two really good men in Rita's life. Orson and Ali both loved her. But there could never have been a worse person for someone who was constantly afraid that her men were going, uh, were going to leave her. Ali Khan was compulsively unfaithful. And also, he had fallen in love with Gilda and had no sense that the whole reason for Rita's marrying her, him was to escape from Rita Hayworth. And they were in conflict from the moment that the romance started. I met Princess Yasmin Khan, her daughter, who got so active in the Alzheimer's. When did that begin in Rita's life? Not, well, not Yasmin's involvement, but her mom's disease. That was one of the things that was so scary in telling her story because really it was going on from Rita's 40s. But one of the difficulties was because the symptoms uh, resulting from the incestuous abuse by her father and the early symptoms of Alzheimer's overlap, the wild mood swings, the catastrophic reactions that her family and her friends couldn't tell that there was something new wrong until it had reached a point where things were terribly violent. I remember one terrible picture of her at the end there. 1976 when she went to London and that was the moment when everybody suddenly realized that the most beautiful woman in the world was destroyed physically destroyed let's remember her as Gilda though let's let's remember her as that yeah. wonderful lovely person